Brett Favre is stealing from the poor. I mean, a legend. Those same words, or very close to them, have inspired Favre to file three defamation lawsuits, one against Pat McAfee, one against Shannon Sharp, and one against Shad White. Did you ever think that Brett Favre would have the same number of NFL MVP trophies as he does <laughs> defamation lawsuits? Me neither. It is now time to dig into the welfare fraud scheme and find out if Favre's defamation lawsuits have any merit. Hey, I'm Josh Stanford, I'm America's attorney. Don't forget to lawyer up right now and subscribe to this channel. Now, let's discuss why Brett Favre is maybe Mississippi's wealthiest Karen. Now on, oh, wait, 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 hold on. I think I'm getting ahead of myself. I almost went right past our 32nd history lesson. For those of you who are not caught up on your Mississippi local politics news, in February of 2020, John Davis, the former director of human services for the state of Mississippi, was arrested for embezzlement, along with Latimer Smith, Nancy New, Zach New, Ann McGrew, and Brett DiBiase. I hope I'm saying his name right. And they weren't embezzling just any funds, no, they were stealing funds from federal grants for needy Mississippi families. Ah! And Brett Favre comes into play because several million dollars of the embezzled funds were used to build a volleyball facility at the University of Southern Mississippi, something that Favre advocated for because his daughter played volleyball there at the time. And some of the money went to directly pay Favre for speaking at events that rumor has it, he never showed up to. And when the news broke, tongues started wagging, which leads us to the topic of these three lawsuits. On February 9th, 2023, Favre filed three separate defamation lawsuits against sports commentators, Pat McAfee and Shannon Sharp, and the state auditor, Shad White, all for statements that they made either on their shows or in the national media. Now here's a pic of the auditor knowing a lot about math and numbers and quality control. And then, <laughs> Here's a picture of Shannon Sharp looking like a Mr. Olympia at age 54. Sheesh! Well, no one wants to see a picture of Pat McAfee. That dude's on ESPN like 20 hours a day. But each lawsuit includes a couple of examples of the supposedly defamatory statements made by each individual. This includes comments like, Favre knew that the money was flowing through a nonprofit which was designed to serve poor folks, designed to serve a public interest. And that was from Shad White. Or this one, Favre stole money from people that really needed that money. That was from Shannon Sharp. And this tweet from Pat McAfee. This is a great time to remind you, your social media posts can and will show up in lawsuits. So make it count. Maybe tweet today. I heart America's attorney. There's nothing illegal about that. That's not gonna show up in a lawsuit. Now that's just a few of the examples that were used in the lawsuit. But just because Favre and his lawyers are claiming these statements are defamatory, that doesn't make it so. To prove defamation has occurred, a plaintiff has to prove that each person that he sued, number one, made a public statement. Number two, that the statement was purporting or claiming to be a fact. Number three, that the statement was negligent in some way. And number four, that a financial loss was occasioned by the statement. You already know this. Those are the normal rules of the game. And this is a huge but. <laughs> I don't wanna see that. The normal rules don't apply to Brett Favre. See, once you win a Super Bowl and three NFL MVP awards, and once you star in multiple teary retirement news conferences, well, at that point, you're a public figure. That's great, you're famous, you might be rich. You might even be a spokesman for jeans or copper compression wear. That's great, so what's the downside? Well, for all the great things about being famous, I guess, you start every defamation lawsuit in a fourth and long situation. Because a public figure cannot merely prove negligence and still win the case. A public figure has to prove something called actual malice. Now, I'm not talking about hatred. So what do I mean? Let's get in the Wayback Machine and go to 1964 when the US Supreme Court decided a case called New York Times versus Sullivan. Sullivan was a public figure. He was a government official. The Sullivan Court decided that actual malice means that the defendant said the defamatory statement with knowledge that it was false or with reckless disregard for whether it was false or not. Now, the Sullivan Court also held that when the standard is actual malice, the plaintiff must prove actual malice by clear and convincing evidence rather than the usual burden of proof in a civil case, which is the preponderance of the evidence standard. You know this, it's like 51%. Now, on this point, the precise language that the Sullivan Court used is that the plaintiff must show the convincing clarity which the constitutional standard demands. What are they talking about? They're talking about the First Amendment. Courts do not want to punish people for speaking freely, for exercising their First Amendment rights. Side. The reason that Farr filed three separate cases instead of one is that while the claims in the cases and most of the proof 
would overlap and would be similar. They would not be exactly the same because the supposedly defamatory statements were said by three different people at three different times in three different places. Now, there is a scenario where you could sue three people at once for a defamatory statement. A great example would be like, mm, if the Black Eyed Peas wrote a song about Brett Favre and how he stole money from the poor, then you could sue Will I Am, Fergie, and uh, whatever that other guy's name is, all in one case. Sidebar over. So now that you're on your way to becoming an expert in defamation law, do you think Brett Favre can win his lawsuits? All of them? Two out of three? One out of three? Zero out of three? Look, Brett Favre is not gonna win any of these defamation lawsuits. And for several reasons, it's gonna be really hard for him to prove actual malice was present in the statements made. He's also gonna have a really hard time proving that the statements weren't true because as time passes, it's getting harder to believe that they weren't true. In all honesty, these lawsuits seem to me more like a PR stunt than anything else. He's trying to get public opinion on his side by making a show of like going after the people who spread misinformation about him. And they also made some jokes. Now, if you're like me, Brett Favre was always an easy guy to cheer for. He wasn't highly regarded out of college and he was traded from one team to another for next to nothing. And then he rode the bench for a while until the starter was injured. And then in like a Cinderella script, he came in and he played well. Not well, he played great. He led Green Bay to the playoffs 11 times. And he even won the Super Bowl when he was only 26 years old. And during his career, he set a record that will never be broken most teary retirement announcement. Aww. I'm kidding, but but actually not kidding. I mean, really. But he set the record for most consecutive games started by a QB. That record is untouchable. And many people thought that his second act would be as an announcer or some other kind of ongoing celebrity. But no, no, he's actually become Mississippi's wealthiest Karen, I'm declaring it so today. Favre's final Hail Mary was returned for a touchdown by the other team. That's the reality. These lawsuits, they're failures. Here's the deal. The auditor is a government official. He did months of research. He documented everything. He could be wrong, but he was not lying. And I don't think he was wrong. Oh, Brett Favre, you watching? Sue me, you wrangler wearing legend. Because Shad made a concentrated effort to get to the bottom of the missing money, he won't lose this case. On top of that, if his statements were made in furtherance of his official duties, he's immune from suit. Now, that's a subject for another video someday. So then you have McAfee and Sharp and their cases. Well, those guys were relying, I mean, presumably on the studied and researched report from Shad, which means that they could not have had actual knowledge that the statements were wrong. Favre's getting sacked for a loss in each of these cases. It's a turnover on downs. I mean, at this point, I'd replace Favre with Aaron Rodgers. Huh? What? 14 years ago, they did that already. Hm. All right. Now you know the elements of a defamation lawsuit and you know my educated guess on how these lawsuits are gonna go. So what's left? Oh, right, your pro se opinion. Drop it in the comments below. Do you think Favre can win any of these defamation lawsuits? Has your opinion been swayed about Brett Favre because he sued these people? And what do you actually think of his involvement, whatever it is, in the Mississippi fraud scheme? And make sure in the comments that you use the word allegedly, because you, you, might get Brett Favre's autograph in the mail on a defamation lawsuit. Hey, also make sure you check out these other videos right here. I will see you soon, bye.